So we just arrived at St Mary's Church in Oldworth in Berkshire and we're on the hunt for some giants that we know are still inside this church. The thing is, these giants are made of stone, um, but they date back to the 1300s and could be based on some prehistoric giants that were discovered here much, much earlier. So we're just outside the church of St Mary's uh, at a place called Oldworth in Berkshire, just on the Hampshire border really. And the reason we're here is because, as discussed, there were giant skeletons found very, very closely, actually on the land of the family who these statues are represent. The De La Beche family, who were around in the 1300s or the 1400s, and uh, they were knights, they were kind of from Normandy, uh, and they came over, they were influential in the royal family and so forth. And this is the last remaining place where their mausoleum really um, uh, shows who they were. But the thing is, some of them were over seven feet tall. And this is really intriguing to me because we have in the 1300s then, in this area, supposedly seven foot tall people living here and very close to here of a similar height some giant skeletons and bones were found actually on the same piece of land just within half a mile or a mile of here and I'm wondering you know did the De La Beche family were they actually influenced by the earlier discoveries and we know it, it wasn't one of them family members that was discovered because um, a spearhead, a prehistoric spearhead was found in the back of one of the skeletons and so we know there's no connection but did that influence the De La Beche family and then later um, now even today this is happening in Oldworth there's a big parade of a giant of a giant called John Everafraid and the thing is there used to be an effigy of someone called John, potentially John Ever Afraid, actually here in this church. And he was buried in the wall of the church, actually in the foundations. And the reason being is because he made a pact with the devil to get earthly riches and to become well known and so on and so forth. And if, but if he was buried um, in a church or outside a church, he would go to hell, but they buried him in the wall, so he was in between. Uh, this story echoes in different parts of the country, obviously, but um, I find that really intriguing. That, that's com that statue has completely disappeared, but the other ones in here are on display, and one of them is seven foot two tall. So let's go in and have a look, and then we'll try and find the location of what, where John Everafraid was potentially uh, buried, well, at least his statue was buried. So, this is Oldworth Church and immediately you can see some of the giant statues that are on display here. Here's one example, some of them have the head missing, I think the head's missing completely off this one, you can see that at that end. This is John de la Beche, who died in 1340. There's a dog at his feet. This is Lady Joan who was the wife of Sir Philip, and he was the giant. We'll have a look at him in a moment. And it's got angels around her head, as you can see there. This is the third effigy, Philip de la Beche. This is the second son of Sir Philip, the giant, uh, also called uh, Philip, of course. And uh, you can see the visor and the, um, the helmet because he was a knight and he was actually the sheriff of Berkshire at Oxford, Oxen in 1332 to 1333. Two more examples here, a lady and a gentleman. This one is Sir John de la Beche, who was a knight of Berkshire in 1316 and keeper of Winchester Castle. He was actually committed to the Tower of London in 1322 by Edward II, but pardoned by Edward III in 1327. Interestingly, at the Tower of London, there is a, a coat of armour, uh, sorry, a suit of armour, which is seven feet tall, so I wonder if that was one of the de la Beche family. So we're just going into the main part of the church here. Now this is the one we really want to look at. This is Sir Philip de la Beche, son of Sir John, um, who received the lands from his father. He was the sheriff of Berkshire at Oxen, 1313 to 14. And you can see um, that he was even jailed as a rebel, which is kind of cool. But this guy was seven foot tall, it says on the side, but he was actually seven foot two, apparently. And you can see just down by his feet there, that is actually a dwarf, 
which was put there to make him look even bigger. So I find that particularly intriguing and quite funny, actually, um, that that would, um, you know, you'd represent it. But he's lying on his side, his legs are all crossed over, and you can see he's still wearing his suit of armor. But this guy was seven foot two, according to um, uh, the reports. And you can see the way his legs are folded. It's a very large body. And there's his head up there, and we have a couple of more effigies just over there. One of nine giants carved in oolitic limestone in the 1300s here in Oldworth Church, which is now dedicated to St. Mary's. This whole area is quite an interesting area. We're just a half a mile north of the Grimm's Ditch, which is this massive linear earthwork, which potentially is Bronze Age or Iron Age. There's some hill forts not too far from here. Uh, Perbera Hill Fort is a couple of miles away. And there's another one in the area we're gonna try and find and have a look at. And I'm just absolutely fascinated by this place. It's, there's no one else here today. There's good light in here, so we're getting some nice shots. And we have effigies of giants. So this just absolutely blows me away. So I just wanna thank you, Sir Philip for proving the existence of giants, even though you're only made of stone. This is an effigy of Sir John de la Beche, and he was the son of Sir Robert, and um, his feet has a lion resting on it. And this is interesting because he was over six foot, he was like six foot two or six foot four. So we have another relative giant here in the church of St. Mary Oldworth. This is Sir Robert de la Beche, who was knighted by Edward I in, seven, in 1278. And he has armor, and this is one of the, this is really number one of the nine effigies according to the guide. And it was carved between 1300 and 1350. You can just see them all over the church here. Now they were destroyed at the time of Cromwell, and so many of them have been quite badly damaged. You can see the arms are chopped off, the legs are chopped off and so forth. This is Sir Nicholas de la Beche. Sir Nicholas de la Beche, and you can actually see his face. He's kind of praying and he's been placed right in the center of the church, whereas the others are all around the edge. But yeah, anyway, that, this is like the final one, apart of course from John Ever Afraid. Just here we have what's called the Oldworth Yew in the churchyard of St. Mary's in Oldworth. This is potentially 2,000 years old and even on the sign it says that this may have been a pagan site before it was used as a Christian site from the 1300s onwards. So to me this does suggest the people who were buried here before the De La Beche family, i.e. the giants that were found just down the road, were in fact part of a prehistoric culture and a society who worked and lived in this whole area. So just outside the main entrance to the church, just to the right, and you can see here, this is probably the alcove where the 10th giant statue of John Ever Afraid or different names given to him were buried. And so it's been covered up now and I think it's been lost completely, although there are rumors that the statue is actually taken away with his body as well and reburied at Hungerford Church. Um, so that's quite intriguing, might be worth going to check that out. But this is potentially why he was buried in the wall, because he made a pact with the devil. So he was in between worlds, in between the interior of the church and outside in the normal world where he was spiritually safe. So in the history and antiquities of Newbury and, in, and its environs, a book that came out in 1839, it describes skeletons being found near a church in Hampstead Norris, but it could even be this church because this is on the road between Compton and Hampstead Norris. So it could have been in the same churchyard or it could have been just down the road. We're going to go and have a look because the description places it at the, at the road area where it, it, it turns to go to Oldworth from, uh, from Hampstead Norris. So we're gonna go and have a look at that in a moment. We've already seen some stones, two large sarsen stones in, uh, just embedded into the ground in Compton. 
and we know near there as well, uh, well there's actually four we found in total but near there there was um, Perbera Castle which is like a hill fort going back to at least the Iron Age maybe the Bronze Age but I just want to read you this quote because to me this is the most interesting aspect which really got me understanding what was going on in this area about the giants so I'll just read this to you so you got it all down it's really interesting and this is from the book from uh, 1839 at the entrance to the village of Hampstead Norris from Compton, where the two roads meet, there stood an ancient ash house. About a foot below the floor of this ash house was found the skeleton of a very large sized man. The teeth were perfect. At that time, many supposed it to be the remains of a man that was missing about 50 years before. About five years ago, and nearly close to the same place, as some labourers were widening the road, they discovered another very large skeleton about three feet below the surface. The teeth were very fresh and good and must have belonged to a young person. The jawbone was an inch or two longer than the usual size. But the most extraordinary circumstance was that in the backbone was transfixed a flint in the shape of a spear and which measured to have been broken off close to the handle. Should this have been the case, the body must have been interred upwards of 1700 years ago. And so this is from the History and Antiquities of Newbury and its Environs from 1839. The De La Beche family who built this church and put the stone effigies inside it were actually the discoverers of um, what, you know, of the bones that were found uh, on their land or it could have been found by someone else and they told them about it and I believe this is what influenced the whole De La Beche family to present themselves as giants it kind of fit with the legend and there was already a story going around of John Everafraid who was supposed to be a giant in the area um, and so you know what came first here did the De La Beche family did they kind of you know create the story first because the report only came out in the you know 1800s so there's a bit of an in intrigue here unknown what came first but the whole area around here around um, Compton and Oldworth um, is really really interesting it seems to be the domain of giants going back from prehistoric times right up to the 1400s So I've now made my way to Hampstead Norris. This is the actual village where the giants were supposed to have been discovered. That were reported in 1839, but probably found much earlier. Two were discovered. Interestingly, in the woods, just south of Hampstead Norris, just if you walk through the churchyard, and continue out the back, there's a huge mound. That mound is behind me now. Uh, can't really tell. They think it's a Norman Mott and Bailey because it's got a ditch, a huge ditch around it. The mound's probably 50 feet wide or so forth and you can barely see it, it's so overgrown. But there is a mound here and it was on this land, it was described in the account, where the mound was and within there was some kind of coffin shaped earthwork. So it's just ahead of me here is the Hampstead Norris Mott, which they believe, which I believe could well have been an ancient Bronze Age mound. It's very close to where the giants, the Newbury giants we call them, were discovered. 